This is Keith with CADSharp.com, and in this short video I want to demonstrate how to make your VBA macros compatible with the new 64-bit version of VBA called VBA7. This is the version of VBA found in SOLIDWORKS 2013 and subsequent versions. First, I need to point out that most macros are compatible with VBA7 already. They'll continue running just fine and no problems should arise. So how do you know if your macro needs to be modified to work with VBA7? In the simplest scenario, you'll see an error message when you try to run your macro. In more complicated scenarios, SOLIDWORKS might even crash without warning. In this short video, however, I'm only going to show you the simplest and most common scenario. If what I'm about to show you does not seem to fit your situation, check out our VBA7 blog post at cadsharp.com for more help. Before I show you the error, however, I want to show you how the macro is supposed to work. To do that, I'll demonstrate in SOLIDWORKS 2012. So right now I have SOLIDWORKS 2012 open, and I have the macro open, and basically all this macro does is it's going to let me browse for a folder on my hard drive, and it will print that folder path to the immediate window. And to do that, we're going to use this function, browse folder, which is defined in this other module I have. And we're using several Win32 API calls in order to do that. And how this works exactly is beyond the scope of this video, but what you need to know is that we are making calls to DLLs created by Microsoft that expose the Windows API calls. So let's go back to the main sub procedure, and I'm going to click the Run button. And when I do, I get this Browse for Folder dialog box to come up. And I'll just click on C Drive and click OK. And when I do that, notice that C Drive is printed to the immediate window. No problem. Now keep in mind that this is SOLIDWORKS 2012, and this is running a 32-bit version of Visual Basic for Applications. So now let's go into SOLIDWORKS 2013, and I'm going to open up the exact same macro and I'll go to the main sub procedure and when I click run I get this compile error the code in this project must be updated for use on 64-bit systems please review and update declare statements and then mark them with the PTR safe attribute so if I click OK I'm taken to my other module and where my Win32 API functions are being declared I'm getting an error and notice they're in red the reason I get this error message is that I am using a DLL that is not marked as safe for use on VBA7. Let me pause here for a moment and make an important point. Virtually all of the issues you will run into regarding VBA7 will relate to DLLs. These issues happen for at least one of the following reasons. First, your DLL is compiled for 32-bit processes but you are trying to load it into VBA7, which is a 64-bit process. Second, your DLL is compiled for use in 64 processes, but your functions and their associated variables are not modified for use in 64-bit processes. In our case, I know that the first reason does not apply because the functions I am declaring belong to a DLL that I know is compatible with 64-bit processes. I know this because it is a Win32 DLL made by Microsoft, and Microsoft has recompiled these Win32 DLLs to work in 64-bit processes. Common Win32 DLLs include kernel32.dll, gdi32.dll, user32.dll, and shell32.dll. If your DLL is one of these, you don't have to worry about its compatibility. If your DLL isn't in this list, visit our blog post on VBA7 for more advice before proceeding. So once you know your DLL is 64-bit compatible, we need to consider the second possible reason for incompatibility. This is the situation with this macro. We can prevent the error message from appearing simply by making a few small changes to the code, as indicated by the error message itself. First, we need to make a change in our function declarations. In your macro, anytime you use functions or subprocedures from an external DLL, you have to declare its name, location, arguments, and return value. To tell VBA7 that this function is safe for 64-bit use, we need to add 
the keyword PTR safe after the declare keyword. So right here, I'm just going to type in PTR safe. And notice that the line is no longer red. And then I'll go down and do the same thing right here. So you'll need to do that for each of your declare lines. That's not the only change we need to make, however. Any long variables used by these functions need to be changed to a long PTR. This is a new data type available in VBA7 that provides a 32-bit or 64-bit memory address, also known as a pointer, depending on whether VBA is running in a 32 or 64-bit process. So making the conversion is really just as simple as adding PTR on the end. So I'll just copy the PTR. And there's two of them. And now let's see what happens when we run the macro. We get type mismatch. The reason we get type mismatch is because even though I changed the return values of the function to long PTR, those aren't the only long variables associated with this function. So notice, for example, right here, and the arguments is long. So we need to add PTR right there. And let's see if that fixes it. No, it does not. So here we see sh browse for folder is using this argument by. Let's see where that is declared. Right up here is by as browse info. Okay, so what is browse info? Well, if we go up to the top, here we see this private type browse info where this is being defined and notice that this is also full of longs. So we actually need to change all of these to long PTR as well. And I know for a fact that not every single one of these necessarily has to be changed because not every single one of these is actually a pointer, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And if you want to learn how to know exactly which variable needs to be changed, you can check out that blog post I keep referring to. But uh, now that I've changed those, let's go ahead and try this one more time. Still type mismatch, and that's because I need to change these as well, I think. And there, when I click run, now it works. So I should be able to select any folder, click OK, and there it prints it to the immediate window. Now, one other comment I want to make is that while you're converting a lot of these longs to long PTR, if you forget to convert one of them, it's possible that in some situations you won't get that nice error message that says type mismatch. I've actually seen SolidWorks crash in some instances. So you want to make sure that you have your work saved and you're not working on anything important in the background because when you try to use a 32-bit pointer in a 64-bit process, you can have something really go haywire. Worst case scenario, SolidWorks will just crash. So with those rather simple changes, our macro now works in VBA7. But this raises a question. What about older versions of SOLIDWORKS with 32-bit VBA? Is our macro now incompatible with those versions? Well, the answer is yes. And just to demonstrate that, I'll go ahead and save this and close out of it. And then we'll go back to SOLIDWORKS 2012, open it. And if I go to main and click run, I get this compile error expected sub or function because it does not recognize the PTR safe keyword. Because PTR safe and long PTR are actually new in VBA7 and SOLIDWORKS 2012 and previous versions do not have VBA7. So this seems like really bad news because now our macros appear to either have to be compatible with one version or the other, either 32-bit VBA or 64-bit VBA. But there is a solution. We can get this macro to work in both 32 and 64-bit versions of VBA by using what are called conditional compilation constants. Using these, we can prevent the compiler from compiling code depending on the version of VBA running. So to use these conditional compilation constants, the first thing we need to do is identify which areas of our code we want to be conditionally compiled. And it's pretty safe to say that most of the changes were made up here, so this section will definitely fall in that category. However, this line down here also has 
some long PTR declarations. So I'm just going to move this back up here since we can technically declare these variables inside or outside of the function. It really won't make a difference in this macro. So basically here's the code down here that's always going to remain the same regard regardless of which version of VBA we're on. So now to actually apply these conditionals, what we're going to do is use the pound sign and say if VBA7 then, and I'll go ahead and put a space there and then come down here and we'll say else and then end if. And notice I just put a pound sign in front of each of the keywords and that's really how VBA's preprocessor knows that conditional compilation is going on. So again, this is the section with our long PTRs and our PTR safe keywords, so that's going to be applied if VBA7. And of course, this keyword doesn't exist in the 32-bit VBA lexicon, so what will happen here is this will just return false. But when we're actually in VBA7, this will be recognized and it will return true. So now let's grab the same piece of code and hit Control C, and then I'm just going to open up a notepad file, and I'll use find and replace, and I'm going to change long PTR to long, and grab all that, and then put it down here, and then also don't forget to remove your PTR safe keyword from this section as well. So with that, let's go back to our main sub procedure and try this out and it works just fine. So let's save that and now let's go back to SolidWorks 2013, open that same macro, and we should see red here and that's okay even though this isn't recognized because we have these conditional compilation constants this will get ignored during compile and so we won't get the compile error. Instead only this will be compiled. So if I go back here and run this Notice it works just fine. So we have compatibility in both 32 and 64 bit VBA. So that concludes our basic how to guide on preparing your macros for use in a 64 bit environment in SolidWorks 2013 or later. If you have any more questions about VBA 7 or 64 bit, I highly recommend you check out our blog post on the topic because I go into way more detail there and discuss a lot of scenarios that I didn't have time to cover in this video. Thanks for watching.